Yeah, hello and welcome back. This is now um, some excursus, so an additional remark, which just doesn't exactly fit here, but which will, you will need in the <clears throat> further course of events a bit later. So this is now something on the details concerning the rule of 3.6 USDG. Uh, the place of delivery of a good is where the movement of that good towards the customer begins, because there are several thumb rules there. Um, a closer look shows the place of delivery is where the movement or transport of the good towards the customer begins, and three important thumb rules are now never to be forgotten any more. Number one, the movement of the good cannot begin before that good exists. This is sheer logic, but it often has surprising implications. For example, a carpenter gets the order to deliver a custom-made kitchen. Now you see in your imagination or even in real life that this uh, carpenter starts in the morning with all the necessary material on his um, van and drives from his firm in Cologne to the address of the customer in Dusseldorf and assembles the kitchen there. Now, where's the place of delivery? You all saw the, him beginning to drive from Cologne to Dusseldorf. However, the place of delivery is where the movement of the good in question begins. The good in question is the kitchen. And what is moved from Cologne to Dusseldorf is not that kitchen, but only the material from which the kitchen will be made and the kitchen itself only begins to exist in the room of the customer at Düsseldorf. So we find out the earliest place where the movement of that kitchen towards the customer is in the rooms of the customer in Düsseldorf and there the kitchen stays. So this is even on a closer look not a movement of a good with deliver with transportation, not a delivery of the good with movement of the good but a delivery without any movement. The kitchen begins to exist in the rooms of the customer and ends up there not being moved anymore. Mm -hmm. This example, by the way, shows that in many cases where you have a delivery without movement, you can easily identify that when you look to the earliest place where a movement can begin, that is here the good only begins to exist in the rooms of the customer and there it stays so we don't have any movement so it's three seven not three six well another case let's think about a production machine which is ordered by a customer from munich and that customer explicitly required that the machine is painting in a green color which must have or must fulfill certain special rare qualities and the producer is not able to do so. The producer only produces these machines in black color and it's a very primitive color, does not uh, fulfill the safety driven or what else requirements of the customer. So what our producer has to do after the machine has been produced in Pforzheim, Germany, um, he has to send the machine still to a firm which is specialized on paintings like the required one. This firm is in Belgium. So from Pforzheim the machine is sent to Belgium. There it is painted as required. And now on behalf of the owner that is still the producer in Pforzheim, this machine is now sent to the address of the customer in Munich. Now, where's the place of delivery? If we have a look to that contract, we see that the machine which was ordered has that specific green color. What the producer sent from Pforzheim to Belgium was not yet this machine. So only after the special painting was added, the required good, which was to be delivered, was finished and did exist. So the earliest place where the shipment of the good to the customer could begin was in Belgium. 
and indeed there is in this special constellation the place of delivery made by the Pforzheim entrepreneur to the customer in Munich. By the way, it's still the Pforzheim entrepreneur because he is still the owner during the time when the machine is painted in Belgium. And you know, a delivery is transfer of ownership from the first owner to the second owner. And here, the Belgian painting firm is not involved. Yeah. Okay. A customer orders or ordered a custom-made production machine again from a production firm in Paderborn, Germany. The machine was assembled provisorily in Paderborn in order to test. Everything is okay. And then it had to be transported. And as it was a very huge machine, it had to be disassembled again for the transport and shipped to the customer's address in Frankfurt in Germany. There it was again assembled by the deliverer's staff. Where's the place of delivery? Well, the place of delivery is where the movement of the good begins. The good, um, the earliest time where that good existed was already in Paderborn. There it already existed. It was assembled together, um, was evidently finished, and that it was then disassembled for the transport does not really matter. The machine was present at Paderborn and then carried to Munich, so there was a transport of an already existing machine from Paderborn to Munich, or oh, Frankfurt, sorry. So here we have a transport from Paderborn to Frankfurt. The place of delivery is where the transport begins at Paderborn, so in the inland. Another case, um, you know, a shop which I want with respect to brand names called Mikea. And there the customer buys some furniture, carries it home and assembles it at home. Now place of delivery. Well, here the furniture is only finished at home. But what you bought is not the furniture, but only the material uh, which you need to assemble the furniture for yourself. So the good in question which you bought was the material necessary for the construction of the furniture. And these parts existed already at the Mikea shop and were transported home. So here the place of delivery is where the transport of these parts begins that is in the shop. Well, another idea. This is now for some rule number two. Some rule number two is you can only transfer a good to a customer if a customer exists. And so, if you don't have the customer, then the transport cannot yet begin to exist. So, let's imagine this. A firm from Frankfurt sends a shipment of flowers to a flower shop in Berlin. While the lorry is on the way, the firm's owner gets news that the customer in Berlin is practically on the verge of bankruptcy and will not be able to pay for the shipment. So, he takes his mobile phone uh, calls the lorry driver and orders him to stop immediately, look for the next possible parking lot and wait there for further instructions. The lorry driver does so and uh, stays at a parking place near Berlin Spandau, so a few kilometers away from the um, targeted address. An hour later he gets a telephone call, everything's okay now, we have found somebody in Hanover who is willing to take over the shipment and is able to pay. So he begins now to drive to an address in Hanover, where's the place of delivery. The place of delivery is under the rules where the transport of the good towards the customer begins. The transport towards the customer at Hanover only begins at the parking lot at Berlin Spandau because the transport of the good to the customer was not possible before, before we did not have that customer at Hanover. Now the transport from Frankfurt to Berlin Spandau was a transport 
towards a customer in Berlin, which in the final effect did not become the customer because the delivery was canceled. So the delivery to the customer in Hanover only began at Berlin Spandau. There is the place of delivery. A firm from Heligoland sends unrequested low value goods to potential customers in the mainland of Germany with a kind request to either pay for them if they want to keep them or otherwise to send them back. Um, let's say the cost for the transport back have been added or something like that. The idea is evidently if we send something from Heligoland then the place of Delivery is in Heligoland, that's a third country, so it's not taxable under the regular VAT law. And in former times, when such a case really happened, there was an exemption from importation VAT for low value packages having a value of less than 20 euro. So that was planned as an ingenious tax saving scheme, non taxability of all these low value shipments. Now, when it came to court, the question was, where is the place of delivery? And the place of delivery is um, where the movement of the goods towards the customer begins. That requires that you already have a customer. If you just send unrequested goods to a customer, that's just an offer. Only when the customer decides, I'm going to buy this, then the customer becomes a customer. And so, the decision to make a contract was only made at the moment when the goods were already within the houses of the customers in the mainland of Germany. So the place of delivery under 3.6 was in the houses of the customers, so in the mainland. So all these uh, transactions turned out to be taxable. Uh, so the transport of the goods was probably from the kitchen table to somewhere else in the room or where the package was opened to where um, the customers later stored these goods. A very small transport, but definitely within the inland. That was some pool number two. So let's sum it up. The movement of the goods towards the customer cannot begin before that customer exists. Some rule number three, no supplier can deliver a good which he or she has not yet got. So in cases where one and the same good is sold several times after another, that leads to the following important sub rules. First, as long as the follow first delivery has not yet been fully finished or fully accomplished, the second delivery cannot yet have begun. And the opposite conclusion, whenever the second delivery has definitively already begun, then the first delivery must have been finished before. So just to illustrate that, A from Aachen receives an order from B from Brazil. B from Brazil sells to his customer C already from Chile. Now it's required that A brings the goods to Hamburg Harbor, where they are taken over by C, who will then bring them to Chile. Now um, A thinks that the delivery is an expert because he knows the goods end up in Chile. But what's the solution? A's transport of the goods begins at Aachen. In Germany, that's clear. So the delivery of A has uh, three, six, sentence one, it's start at Aachen. He delivers to B on the, to the place where B required to send the good, that was Hamburg. And now then the goods were already taken over by C. C has nothing to do with the contract A to B, so it's clear that from Hamburg onwards, the contract B to C already starts to be executed. And so the contract A to B ends at Hamburg because provenly the delivery B to C already begins to start at Hamburg. So we have for A a place of delivery under 3.6 in Aachen and for B a place of delivery in Hamburg. So 
B2C is an export. They are the good crosses the border and enters the third territory. Whereas A to B is an inland transaction from Aachen to Hamburg. So it's not an export. Another case, customer C from Calais in France orders a good from B in Bonn, Germany. B in turn um, orders the same good from A in Aachen. And in order to save some costs for the transport, he asks A to send the good in question directly to his own customer C in Calais. Where is the place of delivery in the contract B to C? Well, A's delivery to B begins at Aachen 3, 6, sentence 1 where the movement of the good towards the customer begins. Now the customer of A is B, B required to send the good to Calais. If the good arrives at Calais, it is handed over to the person whom B empowered to accept the good in his name and on his behalf, then the delivery A to B has ended successfully. So A brings the good to Calais hand it over to C because B has told him so. So at that moment, the delivery A from B has been accomplished. Only afterwards, the delivery B to C can begin. And at that moment, the good is already at Calais. So Calais is the first place where B can begin to send the good to C. However, the good stays at C's location, so this second delivery is a delivery without any movement through 7. Another case yet. A from Aachen sells a good to B from Bonn. B sells to C from Chemnitz, Germany. As the matter is urgent for C, B tells C that he can go to A in Aachen and take over the good there himself. So he calls his own uh, supplier, says, hey, here's B. And A well, just want to inform me there is somebody um, called um, C will knock on your door, tell, um, tell you that he comes in my name. That's true. You can hand him over my good. Okay, C so arrives at Aachen and takes his good home to Chemnitz. Well, the place of delivery here is simply to be determined when... C arrives at Aachen, C already car and carries home his good, then this is already the execution of the contract B to C, because C has no motive to carry through the world the goods um, which have nothing to do with him, him himself. So when C drives through from Aachen to Chemnitz, that is nothing to had nothing to do is a contract A to B. That's B to C already. So the delivery from B from Bonn uh, to C begins not in Bonn, but where the transport by C starts, that is in Aachen. Now the contract A to B must have been necessarily fulfilled before that happened, because B can only pass on a good to C after he has got it already. So that implies that B must have received that good before C saw this as transport. So the good was at that point of time still at Aachen. It had always been at Aachen before. So the logical conclusion is that ownership during that first delivery just hopped over at Aachen without any movement of the good 3-7 from A to B. And then C started the transport. This third sample is especially important for dealing later with the so-called chain transactions. These are transactions where one and the same good, identical, is sold several times, one after another, at least two times. But only one transport happens directly from the first in the chain to the last in the chain. Okay. Uh, these were my important remarks on the three necessary sample rules, which you always need to keep in mind when you have to apply 3.6 USDG to determine correctly the place where the delivery of the good begins. Okay, thanks for watching and goodbye till next time.